Here I was working on a video for how to use Foundry when out comes Tailspire, the newest and perhaps flashiest new virtual tabletop for all of us remote role players. It just came out on Steam for $25, but it is still an early access. So the question on your mind at this point in time is, is it worth getting? Let's find out. So, there's no denying, Tailspire looks cool. It really brings to life the look of a tabletop designed by a DM with too much time and money on their hands. You can make some really rad looking set pieces. Of course, how easy are those set pieces to make for a GM who doesn't have all the time in the world to prep for a map that will just be used in a single battle? Now, I've currently sunk about six hours into learning and getting the hang of Tailspire, and honestly, it isn't bad. Setting out tiles is pretty basic, and the shortcut controls to rotate and elevate pieces works smoothly, though depth perception and angles definitely gave me some struggles early on, and later on. Here's a hint. Push 3, then click on the surface you want to place something on to lock it into that elevation. Seriously, this will save you a ton of frustration, and thank you so much to the two community managers who taught me that and held my hand during that live stream. But yeah, with a little work, you can end up piecing together some fairly rad-looking locations without a ton of work. I made this basic dungeon in under an hour. Given more time and practice, I can make something even cooler in possibly less time. But what if you don't have hardly any time? Thankfully, the community has you covered. See, you can select sections of a map and save them as lines of text called slabs. That line of text is all you need to save an attribute and communities have already arisen to share these slabs. And since slabs are stored in just lines of text, you can literally just copy from these websites Hit Control-V and Tailspire, and boom, rotate, elevate, place it where you want. No downloads, no importing, installing, infuriating things to learn. However, slabs can only get so big and complex, which is pretty frickin' big and complex, honestly. But for the truly massive assets, users can also upload entire boards on these sites for you to get. And again, it is as easy as clicking a few buttons and it's imported instantly into your game as a new separate board that you can then edit and use however you like. You can change the lighting, add some ambient sound, even throw in some music. It's amazingly simple. Now it's time to place some miniatures for your baddies and goodies. Yeah, miniatures, not just tokens. You can name, size, and even give some really basic stats to those miniatures, save unique ones, which is great for your players' characters, and of course, assign miniatures to players. These miniatures even have a sort of line of sight, at least for seeing other miniatures. So we have the maps, we have the miniatures, how about combat? Well, when you switch from exploration mode, which allows all players to move freely, into combat mode, the GM gets to assign initiative order, restricting movement to turns. Since the system is tile-based, distance and movement work great for D&D and similar systems. There are ways to indicate to the GM that you're attacking an enemy and for the GM to confirm you hit, but it's really basic right now. You can create groups of dice that will always collect and roll as a group, and even if you throw them out of sight, everyone will clearly see the results. There is also a slick little Chrome extension that allows you to use your D&D Beyond character sheets to roll in Tailspire, giving your roll a name and modifier, so that's pretty darn slick. But of course, there's even more. First, like I said, music and ambience, along with fog and lighting, really help bring these maps to life. The ability to have lighting and torches is awesome. Furthermore, if you like to have little cutscenes in your games, as a GM you can enter cutscene mode, restricting player movement, and have your player's screens change to predetermined static views. You can play some stuff out like a cutscene in a video game, it's wild! So honestly, with all this, it's sounding like an absolute recommendation, and it mostly is. Mostly. But before you run out and buy it, there are a few potential issues to consider. 
First and foremost, this is still early access. There are a good number of assets and games to make your maps and miniatures, but it's still fairly limited to some pretty standard fantasy stuff. If you want to run a modern or sci-fi game in Tailspire, you're really going to have to do some imagining. Thankfully, the devs have plans to release asset packs pretty much monthly, I think, and eventually Tailweaver, their modding tool, will be made publicly available, meaning you'll be able to design or download user-made assets. But if you get it right now at launch, you're gonna be limited. Second, if you run bigger games using Roll20 or Foundry right now, and you love having all the character sheets and journal entries and video chat and all that rolled into one program so you and your players don't have to jump around between windows, Tailspire might feel a little limited. No character sheets, no journals, no integrated items or game systems or video chat, not even text chat. This is pretty bare bones if you're used to having all that stuff. Now, I used to run games on Discord with a separate window for the maps, another window for D&D Beyond sheets and stuff, uh, another one to write notes. But now, I've gotten really used to having all that stuff loaded into Foundry, and a number of my players only have one monitor, and not the three that I frickin' have. Having to go back to switching between windows might deter some people. No importing your own music or 3D assets. The Fog of War is definitely in beta, and it works, but struggles a bit if you use it on a larger scale. Thankfully, these are all things that they are working on. Their FAQ is full of goals and information if you want the specifics, and really, the future of Tailspire is looking incredibly promising. And frankly, the present of Tailspire is pretty darn impressive and fun. The devs have said they plan to implement some form of character sheets in the future and hope to eventually add some form of text, audio, maybe even video chat. But, just like I ended that last paragraph with, if you get it now, you're gonna be limited. All of your players will have to purchase their own copy if you want to play with them, as there is no cheaper or free player version. But with all the devs are offering, along with hosting the servers, $25 per person is a more than reasonable entry fee in my book. If you don't mind playing without some of the more robust features of other virtual tabletops, Tailspire is a lot of fun. Even if you don't see yourself really using it until more features are added, buying it now might give the devs that extra bit of financial support they need to get those features done faster. And that's it! If you'd like to see more RPG-related content, be sure to subscribe and gently caress that bell icon to do something, I don't know. I livestream video games and tabletop stuff on Twitch, and I also create content on Mojo Menace with my friend John. Links on that and more in the description. Also, huge thanks to everyone who's been sharing and subscribing. Your support has been really freaking cool. I promise I'll have the Foundry tutorial video and some more stuff out soon. Also, I have some really interesting, unique live play stuff around the corner. A corner. Some eventual corner. Bye!